we take a look at some of the strangest rockets ever made. We begin with number 7, and it's the quad. Many weird ideas were pursued during the Lunar Lander Challenge in 2006. John Carmack, the mastermind behind Doom and Quake, developed a unique craft under his company Armadillo Aerospace. The vehicle is able to balance itself by transferring propellant through connecting pipes via ullage pressures. The vehicle was controlled through fiber optic gyros, along with being fully computer controlled with guidance from GPS. The company continued on with the mod and eventually the Stig rocket, but unfortunately the company disbanded in 2015. Moving on we get to the Delta Clipper. Built in the early 90s, the Clipper was intended to be an uncrewed single stage to orbit vehicle. The craft stood at 39 feet and was powered by four liquid hydrogen engines which produced 13,000 pounds of force each. Four gaseous oxygen thrusters were also used for reaction control. The prototype was a little bit smaller than the final version, so it was a one-third scaled model, meaning that it never actually reached orbit and was more of a demonstrator for VTOL capabilities. Reaching limited altitudes, it also became the first rocket to land vertically in 1993. NASA eventually took on the project but later focused more on a space plane design, such as the Lockheed Venture Star. At number 5, the Black Arrow. Britain's solely developed launch vehicle was definitely a very unique one. It was composed of three stages, with the first two consisting of gimbaled hydrogen peroxide kerosene gamma engines. The third stage was a waxwing solid rocket booster, measuring in at around 6,600 pounds of force. The Arrow could theoretically launch 200 pounds at a 300 mile orbit. A total amount of four launches were completed, with a 50% success payload delivery rate. The program was funded by the government, so eventually it was cancelled in 1971 based on economics and a little bit of bureaucracy. At number 4, the Roton rocket. An American company developed a very unique hybrid orbital launch vehicle in the 90s. It was designed to provide rapid and routine access to orbit for a two-man crew or a 7,000-pound payload. The rocket would vertically take off with a novel rotary engine burning liquid oxygen and jet fuel. What made the Roton unique is that it had VTOL capabilities, and its helicopter blades were outfitted with tip rockets for stabilization. Naturally, this type of innovative design provided technical challenges. Combined with lack of investment, the project was quickly ended. At number 3, the Ares-1 rocket. Before the modern SLS, many launchers were considered. The two-stage Ares-1 was one of them, and it was built to launch the Orion spacecraft with four astronauts to the ISS. This design led to the X-Variant, which was a first-stage prototype launched in 2009. It consisted of a four-segment solid rocket booster drawn directly from the space shuttle inventory. The test vehicle combined one Orion crew module along with an abort system simulator basically resembling the final variant. But the rocket had instabilities, and it had a tendency to roll around its axis of forward motion. So an active roll system was needed to keep the vehicle stable. This included multiple nozzles, which performed a pulsing duty cycle. Ultimately, this particular rocket did have a few glitches, but it did eventually lead to more advanced designs. We get to number two, and it's the N1. The Soviet Union had an answer to the Saturn V, and it was the very odd N1L3. Specifications of the unit were extreme, with a payload of 95 tons and a total mass of 6 million pounds. The beast stood over 340 feet with a diameter of 55 feet. The basic M1 had three stages, and it was meant to actually get to the moon with several payloads. The project began in 1965, but then was rushed and derailed after the death of its chief designer in 66. All four launch attempts failed, with one resulting in a very catastrophic vehicle crash and causing one of the biggest artificial non-nuclear explosions in history. We fast forward to today and look at number one which is the Eco Rocket. This very unique rocket is a little bit different from your conventional design. The first two stages utilize steam propulsion. Water is held in a high pressure vessel at a very high temperature. This allows water to escape at a very considerable velocity and produce thrust. Several different nozzles have been tested so far, and the first stage will reach an altitude of 26,000 feet, the second with an aerospike design to 164,000 feet, 
And finally, the third stage will launch 22 pounds at 136 miles or 220 kilometers. But as pointed out by other critics, there is a shortfall of the third stage to reach maximum velocity, and there is a big question on whether or not it actually has the ability to deliver payloads into low Earth orbit. There's also the question on how much more weight would be packed on for battery discharging in order to increase water temperatures. Usually startup companies make hefty goals to obtain financing, so this doesn't really surprise me at all. There will likely be changes in the final design. But for now, they have demonstrated some of the biggest steam variants, which are still pretty impressive. But more importantly, I would like to know what you think about all these different types of rockets. So please leave a comment, like the video if you enjoyed it, and also make sure to subscribe to my channel.